All right, hello everyone. Back again with another playthrough. Got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES here. I played this quite a bit back in the day. I was never able to progress very far. I think the turtle van stage was as far as I ever got. And I was finally able to beat this fucker for the first time recently. It took me 27 years to do it. Better late than never, I suppose. So now we're already, already at the first boss. Bebop doesn't have very much health, and he's really easy to take out. It's one of the best video game soundtracks in history, as well, in my opinion. This game gets criticized quite a bit for not featuring some prominent TMNT villains. Krang, for example. I never felt that the absence of these characters took away from uh, this game at all. I think the condensed villain roster and Inclusion in some some of the off-the-wall bizarre enemy types really made this game feel like it represented the old Mirage TMNT comics. I really love those early comics, and I don't think they get enough appreciation. This game is notorious for being extremely difficult, and it very much is. I find this game challenging mostly because all of the turtles except for Donatello are, aren't very useful. They mostly just act as meat shields. Because you'll be relying on Donatello so much, it's essential to get used to the bow and how it works. Rocksteady will be your second boss of the game. He's not much harder than Bebop was. You see that the hitbox and the bow extends behind Donatello as well as in front. All of the turtle's weapons will behave this way to an extent, but Don's bow is more apt for it. April likes to act as your metaphorical anchor in this game, providing you with guidance and moral support whenever needed. The jumping mechanic in this game is balls. There's three types of jumps you can do. I categorize them as big, medium, and small. Big jump is easy to do, little jump is a little tricky at first, but Easy to get when you get the hang of it. Medium jump licks ass. That's the one that will probably give you all the trouble. I have a medium pizza of shame up there, which I will get even though I don't need it. No idea, no idea what anything in this game is. It's like, were those those legs, flying legs? I don't know. Leonardo can be pretty useful turtle, I, I guess. But. Uh, Mike and Raph are just there to take damage. They, they're really not all that useful. So we're coming up to the, the swimming part. All you have to do is swim around and defuse the bombs. I think everyone unanimously hates this level. I like to get through just using Raph. I try and avoid as much damage as I can. Speedrunners will just go through and take all the damage, they don't care. The water flows to the right of screen, so it will it will carry you through the electricity to the right, but it, it goes against you when you try and swim back to the left, which is really annoying. I 
had a real love-hate relationship with this game when I was a kid. I, I liked it quite a bit, but it was always so hard I can never get through it. I have no idea if it's possible to get through this section of electric plants without taking damage. Without cheating, anyway. Just keep swimming along. Getting pretty close to finishing, only a couple of bombs left. Raps in pretty poor shape right now. sound. Okay. He's very proud of himself for defusing that bomb. We get to watch this super awesome cutscene with the baddest ass music ever playing over it. Another notorious part of this game, Shredder's hand comes out of the TV screen. Alright, driving around the turtle van is pretty fun. Except for the turtle van shares the same energy bar as your turtle. Just gotta work my way around these rooms here so I can pick up some missiles. The enemy spawns in this game are really weird. You can enter a room and though there will be like foot balloons and the dude that shoots fire at his mouth, like right there and whatever. Then the next screen over will be fighting a completely different group of enemies. It's all based off of a kill counter. Like the angry video game nerd, I had no idea you could just walk over walk over that little jump right there. I also didn't know that you didn't even need to walk over it, you could just jump right through it. <laughs> Speedrunners will kill off a turtle here to exit the building faster, but I'm just gonna walk back out because I want to keep the turtles alive. This is about as far as I ever got when I was a kid. This game, Ninja Gaiden, and Castlevania were all games that haunted me when I was young. I felt like a really shitty gamer because I could never beat anything except for like the first Super Mario, but turns out I was just playing some hard-ass games. So if you push select, you'll exit the turtle van and the, the rollers will just disappear. Later on I try this trick after I shoot a roller and it ends up staying on screen and almost kills me. So much lag.
this stage can be really confusing if you don't know where to go or what to do. You have to keep uh, rejuvenating your missiles if you want to explore. Yeah, I was a little worried there for a second. So we're getting close to the end of the turtle van here. Now I'm going to make my way to the sewer. Just got to get around to all these flame guys. Very good bow mastery right there. <laughs> so the platforms in the sewer could be a real pain in the ass. Just gotta use the small jump and get over. Just tap the jump button lately. Medium pizza of shame, once again. So like, when you're in the air and you jump and you're in the air or whatever and your, your character is locked in a certain kind of arc that it will fall in and you can move left or right through this arc, but it'll pretty much always lead you to a pit. It's kind of bullshit. Alright, round two, just gonna try this again. I really like playing as Leo, but his weapon's so weak. So we're gonna have a full pizza coming up right away. One of the good things about this game is that if you exit and re-exit, uh, a place where there's a pizza, it will keep respawning, so you can fill your turtles up real easy. So I just exit and re-enter to change the spawns, something a little bit more easier. So the drops in this game are based off of a counter. Every 25 kills you have the possibility of getting a sub-weapon. There's a 35% chance you won't get anything at all. You could get a triple star, a single star. I'm not sure if scrolls or uh, the invincibility will spawn randomly in the 25 kills. And destroying projectiles also count towards the uh, the 25 kills. Alright, hey, Mecha Turtle here, here can really fuck you up as you, you'll see. I'm not particularly worried about my health because there's a, gonna be a pizza in the next little room. I just don't want to die. fight. <laughs> so 
So now we're on the airfield, or I refer to it as the airfield. This is where the difficulty in the game gets turned up to 11, as they say. All of your turtles now, besides Donatello, are just there to absorb damage and make forward progress. They're pretty useless. Your uh, damage output goes up, though, when uh, when your health fall, falls below a certain percentage. So Leo's sword can be as powerful as Donatello's bow, but uh, at the cost of only dying in a few hits. So this multiplying guy right here can fuck right off. Just chasing him all around, trying to kill him with my weak-ass weapon. It's so annoying. So I got the rope now. Rope is pretty useless. Except for uh, the part that I'm going to use it for. I always wondered why they included that into the game. It's an interesting feature, but it's not really, not really utilized all that much very well. All you have to do with the rope. Is my NES wigging out there a little bit? Just gonna cycle through my turtles to use low on health. None of them are, but I take the medium pizza of shame anyway. That bug was never there during any of my practice runs, so I didn't expect it to be there. I just walked right into it. Boomerang guys get to be an issue later on. They're not so bad right now, though. Okay. Now you just have to enter enter these manholes and make your way through all these rooms. This part could be a little confusing. You just follow the arrows on the ground outside, and they'll guide you to where to go. There is an area around here where you can get the scroll. I don't bother with that, though. So all these rooms are basically just different configurations of the same things. Just treadmills and flying bugs and these boomerang dudes. Lasers and spikes. I managed to get through them all just using Leo. I was happy about that. So I'm really paranoid about uh, Donatello getting any damage from, from here on out. So many bugs. I actually think I might like this game more than the the second one, the arcade game. 
Never thought I'd say that. <laughs> but I am having a lot more fun playing this than I am that one these days. So you've been fighting this guy this whole time and they just decide to make him a mini boss all of a sudden. So I'm just going to take my time here and kill these things. I'm not killing them in one hit yet because uh, Leo's damage output wasn't under 50%, but I, I killed that one in one hit. Gonna be a full pizza of shame coming up here. I don't know what I was waiting for. <laughs> so now Leo's weapon is back to being as weak as it can be. pretty close to the end of these rooms. I actually considered going to get that pizza down there for a second. I thought better of it. And flames, because why not? I believe this is the last room. Could be wrong about that. Oh yeah, it is. All right. So these spiked walls are going to come at you, will uh, kill you instantly if they touch you. Some more sub-weapons that I'll never use. The infamous uh, full pizza of shame that you cannot get. So this gigantic mouser here is a really insignificant boss. Just stand between the lasers and attack with Dawn. If you pause the if you pause the game during the mouth closing animation, its hurt box will remain on screen. You can continue attacking it. That's probably the easiest boss in the game. Music is so cool. I could probably listen to this all day and just be happy with that. So in this level here, there's three manholes you can enter. Only one will contain the path to the Technodrome. The frame that you press start on at the title screen at the beginning of the game determines which path is the correct one. The one I'm going to is the hardest one but it has a 50% chance of being the right one. These rooms are going to murder the fuck out of your turtles. I'm just going to try and take my time and proceed as cautiously as I can. So I'm going to waste a whole bunch of time here trying to kill this porcupine guy. I 
Luckily, though, those, um, what do you call those things? Those, uh, alien rolly things will, uh, scroll themselves off screen most of the time. The whole thing about this run is that it's it's not about being optimal, it's about being functional. So I'm just going to get patient and just go for it. There goes that guy. This guy will take himself down the ladder. So that guy scrolls himself off right away, but this guy decides to stay on screen. Those guys do a lot of damage. Gonna waste a bunch more time again waiting for this guy to disappear. He ends up staying on though. Once again, I just get impatient and just uh, just go for it eventually. Those bubbles will barely do any damage to you. If at all. Okay, so the Technodrome here is pretty easy. Just duck the electricity right there. Take out the turret guns. You don't have to take out both of them. Uh, one, one would do, but I take out both of them anyway. Don't mind me. I'm just gonna beat up this giant metallic mobile fortress from another dimension with my wooden stick. I love video games. <laughs> It's not a very challenging boss either. I think Me Mega Turtle is probably the uh, the hardest fight in the game. So inside the Technodrome is just a big cluster fucking enemies that wanna show you the pain. It's like this count right here that likes to fly around and shoot lasers at you. These guys get to be a real pain in the ass later on. So I'm not playing very smart here. I don't know what I was thinking. I end up getting my first uh, death pretty soon and I take an intentional game over and just just start over again. So a full pizza of shame. I give to Michelangelo for some reason. Probably should have given that to Leo instead.
These rooms are incredibly unfair. It's just dropping you right on, right on the spiked floors. So many bugs and boomerang guys. I get trolled here pretty bad coming up. <laughs> Just the worst. I make a real big mess out of this part here. I don't spawn those propeller things or uh, those flying dudes correctly here. And there's no way I can avoid the damage. My turtles were such bad shape I couldn't continue, so I'm just gonna I'm just kill them off one by one, get a game over. So now I'll, I'll use all my turtles as I normally intend. The enemies are much easier from the get-go here. It's like the game's just like, oh well, okay, we'll, we'll take it easy on you just this once. Keep zoning out listening to the music. Keep forgetting to talk. <laughs> so I'm just gonna switch to Dawn here and take out these propeller guys. Raph's gonna do a much better job of getting through this platform section than he did last time. I don't know what the fuck those things are, like kangaroos or something? I don't know. So there's going to be a laser guy in this room. That guy was never there ever before either, so I just jump right into him. So I pretty much waste Michelangelo here in this section. He just takes a shit ton of damage for no reason. I keep trying to jump over the boomerang guys, but I don't have a very good, uh, a very good pattern going on here. It's a close one. I probably would have reset if that had, you died there. So I do. I do a better job of manipulating the spawns of the flying laser guys here. If you don't stop and wait, they'll stay on the screen and just troll the hell out of you. This is the part that's good for the good to have the scroll for. So 
So we're coming up in the last mini boss of the game here. You just go over to the corner, crouch attack with Dawn, and he won't be able to do anything to you. All right, it's the last room of the game. If you line your turtle with that uh, that piece of the background right there, you'll be able to just mash the attack button and Shudder won't have a chance. Easy peasy. Now we're treated to one of the shittiest endings ever. Splitter returns to human form for absolutely no reason at all. And you have excelled his skills. Not exceeded. Excelled. April, cheerfully acknowledge your prestige and suggest a celebration with a pizza of shame. Well, that was Teenage Mutant, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NDS. Thanks to everyone who watched. I hope you all enjoyed it. Hope to see you back again whenever I have uh, another video up. Until next time, have a good day.